can you tell us a little bit about, about Central Michigan, just how they play more than anything? Right. Um, well, obviously, they score a lot of points. They push the basketball. Um, they, they change defenses. So they um, kind of a switching man-to-man -man at times. Um, they'll switch ball screens a lot. They'll switch away from the ball some. Sometimes they won't switch away from the ball. They run a matchup zone. Um, they'll zone press. They'll man-to-man -man press. Um, sometimes they won't do either one. Um, so they just kind of try to get you playing at a speed that you're not comfortable with. You know, they get the ball out of the net quick even when you do score and try to attack. And uh, you know, just play at a very fast pace. They have a couple guys that can really shoot. They got a lot of guys that can break you down. They're smaller, so they have a lot of interchangeable pieces. So, you know, very athletic, older players. Uh, we got a couple guys that have been around for a long time. So I think anytime that's dangerous, and the fact that they've been on the road, you know, they've played games and had some success, you know, playing on the road. They might not have won those games, but, you know, they're up by 12 or 13 at Texas. And uh, they're up 17 or 18 points at Nepal. They lose those games. So um, I think that's always a, a sign. I think a lot of times when you play people earlier in the season, when they just haven't had enough guys out on the court that have been on the road and been in some tough situations, it's hard for them. These guys are seasoned. They're older. Uh, this is going to be a, you know, a good challenge for us. We have Matt tomorrow. Yes. You know, he was able to go. You know, he didn't go in every single rep both days, but he was in there enough. We wanted to really kind of balance it um, with him. So he did non-contact on Christmas night. And then he did contact probably about a half, two days ago. Then. But he was about three quarters of practice. We didn't have him in there the whole time. We just put him on the black squad. And he just subbed in back and forth with Travion. When was he, I guess, cleared? I guess, I, mean, I don't know how it um, works. I don't know how it works either, to be honest with you, when he exactly got cleared. I know he, when he had to be symptom free. Mm. When he became symptom free, then you know, he took the concussion test. You know, obviously he was in the protocol, so uh, then he passed it. So, we go back with the two bigs together then in the starting lineup. Um, no, not in this game. I, I think it's kind of smart for us to be able to, to bring him along um, in that first game, kind of see how he is. Um, and plus, they're you know they're more athletic right. and they're smaller, so it's, uh, it kind of works that way. It's, I think when you're playing that way, you got you have to be smart um, about who you play it against. And when you do it, you know, now that we're kind of in, not kind of in an adjustment, we're in an adjustment, I think it's smarter to kind of see how the game unfolds before you kind of figure out how you're going to play. What'd you miss not having it? I think that just the defensive piece and just having another guy out there that knows what they're doing more than anything. You know, we, you know, I think no matter who you are as a coach, I think you, you feel like you beat yourself more than somebody else beats you. Um, I always say that, you know, when we break down, we struggle. You know, make them score points when we don't break down. And um, Matt's a guy that just understands what he's doing, especially on the defensive end. But then offensively, you know, he's he's an intelligent player. So, you know, our, our sometimes our decision making, um, you know, defensively, isn't the best. You know, when it isn't the best, you know, he he erases some of those poor decisions, whether that's a bad closeout or someone just gets beat off the dribble. You know, we get into some tough situations, and if you don't have a rim protector, you know, sometimes you just, you know, they, they're able to come over and make a play, and you don't have good rebound balance, and you just, you just start a kind of a vicious cycle that you never catch up to. What's the path to improvement on some of the high percentage offense stuff that's kind of gone by the wayside this yeah. year, whether it's the layups, the putbacks, the transition no, stuff? No question. Like, our, you know, I think we have people that can shoot the basketball from three that haven't shot it to their ability. I also think our decision making can be better. And when that gets better, I think our percentages will go up. But that doesn't, you know, right. kind of justify why you, you know, you miss point blank layups and breakaway layups and putback layups and things of that nature. To me, it's concentration. And that's been something that we've had success with. And then. You know, we don't have success with. We've been very inconsistent in that area. So I think that's, to me, more of a mental toughness, concentration type for each one of your, you know, each one of your guys that you know, you've got to be able to work towards getting the ball at the rim. Other night against Butler, you know, where we get to the ball at the rim, you know, point blank 19 times. And, uh, you know, we get six baskets out of it. You know, you're six for 19. They get to the ball at the rim 12 times, and they're nine for 12. You know, they have three more baskets than we do, but yet we're at the rim seven more times, you know. As a coach, you got to keep working towards you know, executing so the ball's there. You know, then just keep you know putting in time and working at it, being able to finish around the rim. Nobody's trying to miss a layup, but it has been something that's you know 
really bothered us you know this year I think when those things happen when you miss open shots and you miss point blank layups it messes with your you know your psyche it just does you know how those guys doubt themselves and you know you're, you're more upset at yourself than it kind of you know drags into the next play or the next series of plays. When will you know if you have a mature basketball team? I think when they play that way. <laughs> you know, I, I, we've seen it in spurts. We've seen it in games. I, you know, we weren't very mature, you know, in Nebraska, in my opinion. You know, the ball's just at the rim nonstop. And we had some breakdowns that just, you know, were elementary. And you just can't have them if you expect to win it, you know, a basketball game, period, no matter where it's played. Then I thought we did a good job of responding, you know, at Ohio. I don't, I don't think our effort was bad until it got to the second half defensively against Butler. I felt like we just had some, too many possessions defensively where it is. But like I said, like, it, you know, it really creeped from, I think, our inability to, to be efficient and be productive on the offensive end. I think in, in basketball, you know, your offense is always going to affect your defense. Your defense is always going to affect your offense. It just does. And so the better you can play at one end, you're going to help your team at the other end. So hopefully, you know, we can get some consistency, you know, and then we can start to grow as a team. Cool. Thank you.